Sticks Hex and Hammer is quite the doofus, and uh, he puts out a lot of content lambasting Bernie, so we're going to have a lot of fun um, sort of making fun of these videos. But anyways, Bernie has announced his campaign, obviously, in 2020. We actually looked at his video uh, that he did. I think it was talking about and covering the announcement that he had made, and he you know, said dumb things like, Kamala Harris is far left or that Bernie Sanders is socialist or that oh you know Bernie's such a weak candidate because he didn't beat that was probably the dumbest one that you know he didn't beat Hillary Clinton and that's why he'd be a weak candidate which is hilariously stupid um but anyways this time we are going to be looking at some more of his stuff against Bernie it gets it gets kind of cringy because you start to see this like edgy libertarian nonsense that comes from him as well as just a blatant, you know, uh, dispelling of facts and just sort of just throwing them out the window. It combined with these really stupid, you know, talking points. And I don't know about talking points, but just these platitudes, I'm going to say, is what it is. So what I mean by that is there's no such thing as something, you know, free lunch. Or, you know, uh, oh, I don't think is uh, people are going to be suckers to just getting free stuff. So we're going to look at one of those clips here. Check it out. Socialist image. That's not Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is a wealthy urbanite. He comes from an upper working class family, and, and that is sort of an economic thing. We've got to understand Bernie Sanders was not in poverty, and yet that's all he ever talks about. And the reason why is he loves poor people. Because poor people, if, they, if their lives have been destabilized, then they're more easily suckered by his socialist ideology. Oh, no, no, I want to give you free stuff. Yeah, I know you're on hard times. I'll give you free health care, free education, subsidized food. Really what he means is there's no such thing as free. There's no free meal ticket. The government doesn't have money of its own to spend. No, what he's talking about is he wants to take money, siphon it from productive private labor, tax it. The government, by the way, will take an extra cut of that and then give the remnant to the poor. That's what he really wants, would, would tell you if he was being honest. When he says, well, free health care, no, 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 what you mean is higher taxes. Free education, no, no, you mean higher taxes. People are always talking about, well, look at Scandinavia, look at Denmark. Is that what Denmark puts out a press release saying we're not a socialist nation because they're tired of Bernie Sanders lying to everyone. Oh, what about look at Venezuela? Yeah, they've, they've got a, a disarmament down there. They had a lot of gun control years ago they implemented. Yeah, lots of gun control. Subsidies and free, you know, subsidized housing and free health. They've literally got the same things. Why are they so fucked up and Scandinavia is okay? It's because there's a core of capitalism within Scandinavia propping up their shitty socialism. So his main point that he's making there is to say, oh, you know, Bernie Sanders says everything that he advocates for is free. You know, free health care, free education, etc., etc. So this feeds into the nonsense that is... Uh, there's no such thing as a free lunch, uh, which is very stupid because when you say free healthcare, that means free at the point of access. When you say free college education, it means free at the point of access. Free at the point of access. Free at the point of access. Okay? And when you talk about free healthcare, which he brings up there, you're talking about uh, raising taxes, but the average family would save five thousand dollars a year because they're no longer paying premiums and we know that the overhead cost when it comes to private insurance is a lot higher than uh medicare is so what you're looking at is uh it's free at the point of access so yes you're gonna have to increase taxes but when you talk about lowering the overall cost lowering the percentage of gdp spent on health care as as a total when you look at lowering that that's what you get, okay, because you end up paying less. You're imposing a tax, but the tax that is paid is less than what is currently being paid in premiums and ridiculously sky-high prices when it comes to garbage private insurance costs, okay? So we're not, I don't even know what his argument really there is. Like, it, you say, he says free health care, but what he really means is tax. Yeah, tax. And then what happens? You save money because uh, the health care will be cheaper than what is currently being paid through private insurance. So that, that, that point is really uh, is very dumb. And then um, also we get the free education means more taxes. Actually, it doesn't. Um, well, we could go a couple ways about this. And that's, that's the interesting thing about this. There's actually multiple ways to go about it. So you could go, 
one route, which is a 1% Wall Street speculation tax. What does that mean? Every time there's a transaction done on Wall Street, that means that uh, there's a 1% tax levied, which will go towards funding a uh, free college, uh, which would raise about, I believe, $60 billion or $80 billion is how much it will raise. Remember, Wall Street, they don't create anything. It's just a bunch of cycling of money um, and just you know creating loans and all this type of shit. They're not actually like creating anything tangible. So you put a tax on that. By the way, I believe it's uh, a vast majority of the stock market is owned by like the top 10% or something like that. But your middle class family is not is not putting into stocks and definitely not your poor person. And if you know anything about the stock market, you're not really going to make shit in the stock market if you don't have insane amounts of money to insert because the increase... You're talking about not getting much money unless you have tens of thousands of dollars of inserting. Um, so middle class families don't. Poor ones don't have shit in the stock market. So you can have a tax there that specifically targets just useless transactions that mean nothing, result in nothing, nothing tangible. And then uh, it affects only the wealthy. Okay, Or all we have to do is reroute the money that's allocated to the military. Every time there's a damn budget increase, you're looking at uh, every time it's about 80 billion a year, which is 800 billion over 10 years. So if we literally just rerouted that money, bam, you funded free college. It was not that difficult, was it? So the issue here is uh, we're not even necessarily raising taxes. But if we are raising taxes, it's not on, you know, any of you guys. It's on uh, the fuckers who are who have a shit ton of money in the stock market and who are doing uh, you know Wall Street speculation, who are doing these transactions. So there is not uh, this is not you know more taxes or whatever. It could be if it if it is, it's going to be a one percent tax on Wall Street speculation. So again, he doesn't know what he's talking about, which he doesn't know with most of the stuff. And then he brings up the Bernie socialist thing now. Sticks does not seem to be very well versed in anything when it comes to uh when it comes to political, you know, ideologies in any way because he keeps mixing up all these terms. So Bernie Sanders is not a socialist. Bernie Sanders has mislabeled himself as a democratic socialist, which has actually caused a revolutionary new definition for the term, unfortunately. Um, because I wish we could have just left the definitions as they were. But a real democratic socialist um, you know, the Democratic Socialist Party of the United States existed for a long time. There were actual Democratic Socialists in, like, the 1920s and shit. Um, I forgot the name of the presidential candidate who had gotten, um, I believe it was, like, over 10% of the presidential vote. I forgot his name, though. But, um, they are people who believe in a democratic government, direct democracy, actually, but a socialist form of economy. That's what that means. That's not Bernie Sanders. What is socialism? Socialism is workers owning the means of production. Has Bernie Sanders advocated for the government to mandate that there's a workers owning of means of production? No. Would Bernie Sanders be socialist if he advocated for some uh, forms of worker democracy? No. Because you don't call Germany socialist, but they've got things like that. You don't call Spain so Spain, one of the top 10 businesses is a worker co-op. And in Germany, they actually have a co-determination law where it's like if you have a certain amount of employees, a certain fraction, a certain percentage of the board has to be voted on by the workers. You don't call those countries socialist. So in order to be an actual socialist, you have to come out and say, I want to fucking put every single CEO's head on a stick and then have the workers own the means of production. That's not what he's advocating for. So when the Denmark, you know, when Denmark's prime minister come out, comes out and says it, he's right. Denmark's not a socialist country. That's the point we're trying to make to you. The Scandinavian countries are, um, they're capitalists. With, they have a capitalistic system with a heavy welfare state. So yes, you're right, dude. I know that's hard to believe, but you're actually right. You are correct. That is what Bernie is advocating for. Bernie is advocating for capitalism with a heavy welfare state. He is not, I repeat, not advocating for a full workers owning of the means of production. That is not what Bernie Sanders is advocating for. So you're making the argument for us. And I appreciate that because you are, uh, what you're doing in effect is you're advancing our uh, agenda and our side, which I really do appreciate. 
Um, because, you know, it's very helpful when, uh, you know, your doofuses see that type of stuff. And then, um, the dude literally brought on the Venezuela argument. I mean, how do I even take you seriously? Uh, when you bring up Venezuela, Venezuela is not in any way, shape, or form what Bernie Sanders is advocating for. And by the way, Venezuela, even outside of, you know, the fact that it's literally not what Bernie Sanders is advocating for, but... Venezuela was in large part sabotaged by the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. So even that is a shoddy beginning to, to start. But we're talking about examples of countries that Bernie Sanders wants to model us after. Think of any other modern industrialized nation. Literally any, any of them. Canada, universal health care. Uh, you talk about the U.K., universal health care. France, you know, France has free college education too. So there's no reason to... Um, bring up Venezuela because it's not what Bernie Sanders is advocating for, and it certainly is not uh, even a legitimate argument because, as we know, Saudi Arabia lowered their oil prices on purpose to sabotage Venezuela. So, you know, and they did that because, you know, they're buddy-buddy with the U.S., and they were doing that to, um, they were doing that to, you know, benefit the U.S. So, this is not even a, it's not even a legitimate argument on the face of it. It's ridiculously stupid, but I really can't uh, keep you seriously on that. And then he says that like the capitalism or the socialism part of it's only surviving because of the capitalism. I think he said shitty socialism. <sighs> what does that even mean, dude? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. This is bad. This is really, really bad stuff that we're watching. Um, and then we're going to look at a clip here where he is going to talk about bureaucracy. Here's the thing. Let's say the government says, okay, we're going to take more money from the tippy tops. When it appropriates that money, steals it for itself. It is taking a large proportion of that money into itself before it disperses anything to the poor. The problem is that by adding the government minuteman, in, I mean a uh, middleman, in the middle of a transaction between private entities, it inevitably loses efficiency. The more steps you have in an economic process, the less efficient it will be. The most efficient is two people creating a transaction. If you have a middleman, the government, especially at multiple levels, you're gonna have several bureaus handling that money. Each bureau requires manpower, therefore it requires being paid. It requires, there are pensions involved. There are government health care plans that are, to, that are involved. There's the upkeep, the maintenance, the construction of, of property involved. There's the man, the time and labor that goes into processing things. And then and only then is what gets spit out dispersed to people, to the poor. The poor then take that money, go buy something. They're paying, uh, they're paying a tax. They're paying a sales tax. They pay uh, their taxes and fees on the electricity that even if it's subsidized, okay, there's a fee on the electrical business. There's a fee on who, who delivers their oil or supplies their uh, anything else, the, the plumbing company. Every time they undergo a transaction, the government has inserted itself in. Money is taxed five or six times before it gets to you. That's the inefficiency of bureaucracy, and that's an, it's a hallmark of interventionism and socialism. The less you have, the more efficient it is, to an extent. There does need to be a small core of centralization to process things and keep them going smoothly, or then you get uh, basically the private market equivalent, which is corporate monopolies. But in our system, we've got both. The government allows all sorts of corporate vertical monopolies to exist, which strangulates the private market, even while it implements more and more bureaucracy, which strangles the, pu the public sort of systems. So the idea that Bernie Sanders comes in and says, okay, we're going to take more money from the rich, which, which isn't actually going to work. It's not going to come from, from big corporations. No matter what the marginal tax is, they will use tax havens and loopholes to avoid paying it. Who really gets snookered are the small and regional businesses. You know, this dude has three or four pizzerias on paper. He's a multimillionaire. He's going to pay that high tax rate, and he doesn't have the army of lawyers and accountants like Walmart or Amazon have to get around it. He is fucked. You would see the erasure of most small and regional business chains in this country under the sort of tax proposals that Bernie Sanders is making. One of the reasons that hasn't happened, why we have so many of the small business, we have a, a business culture that's fundamentally different from many other developed nations. The reason why that has become possible is specifically holding those tax rates down. And, and in many cases, and, and the liberals are instrumental in this, giving subsidies to small businesses, like the state of Vermont gives a lot of subsidies, taxpayer money, again, inefficiently, to like local like family farms. So to me, this just seems like libertarian edginess. 
you know, yes, there's going to be bureaucracy. Yes, there's going to be a middleman, which is the government. What the fuck is your alternative? And I, I, I know he put in there, he put in there like, you know, well, we do need a little bit of centralization uh, to keep everything going. Guys, I'm not even sure if he really believes that. I'm not even sure. I'm really concerned because I think this dude might actually be a fucking ANCAP, but he's hiding it because, as you guys know, ANCAPs are not mainstream because they're really stupid. They're dumbest ideology on the entire planet to ever exist, um, ever. And I don't even know if he genuinely believes that. It certainly doesn't look like it. <laughs> it certainly doesn't look like he actually believes that. But he threw it in there, so we'll, we'll take him for the face. But... What is the alternative to that? There is no other alternative. And the things that we're advocating for are all beneficial things. Uh, so whether it be universal health care or free college, you know, whatever it may be, just because there's a government as a middleman does not mean that it is a net positive. Having free college education, that's a net positive on our society. People don't have to go into massive debt. People can contribute to the economy more because they won't be in massive debt once they graduate. People will be able to go without getting into massive amounts of debt. So there is no, you know, net negative that comes out of this. And again, just libertarian edginess and just that kind of stuff. And I've never understood uh, the, the <laughs> I've never understood the appeal of being a libertarian because it seems like there's this sort of uh, at least supposed or what I perceive to be this thought that there's this sort of edginess that comes with it that's like yeah man I'm a libertarian fuck the state <laughs> it's like really bro really um anyways oh and he also he also said there that the you know the dude owning three or four pizzerias is going to be paying the high marginal tax rate I, I dude there's no way a dude owning three or four pizzerias is making 10 million dollars a year 10 million dollars a year you kidding me? 10 million? I really have a hard time believing a dude who owns three or four small pizzerias is making over 10 million a year. In fact, I don't believe it because there's no fucking way that's possible. Okay, you're talking about, um, I think it's 16,000 people in the United States out of over 300 million people make 10 million or 10 million or more a year. You have to be insanely fucking rich to make over 10 million in a year. And even then, if you make 11 million, only one of that million is taxed at 70%. How stupid can you be, man? How dumb can you be? Seriously, man, I can't, ha like, it's so ridiculously stupid. It's unbelievable. I can't believe how dumb this is, honestly. But um, we've got a lot more videos uh, from this guy to talk about, and it'll it'll definitely be really funny to go through these as as time goes by, especially now that uh, the burn has announced his presidency.